welcome. Today we'll be talking about different roles in filmmaking, such as directing, producing, acting, but tips which actors could use, any of the other filmmakers could use as well. If you're a director, you can use these tips as well. If you're a producer, if you're a line producer, if you're a voiceover actor, no matter what kind of role you see yourself playing in this theater of the entertainment industry, you will practically succeed. Now it's only the matter of time, practice, belief in yourself, endurance, because this is basically a war which you have to go prepared to. And persistence, of course. It's just like in the art of Kung Fu, which actually is not a martial art. It's a skill which you develop with time, practice, and then comes the real master level. So, entertainment business, a business which so many people dream of, so many people dream of succeeding in, and it's one of the most loved, but I would say studied businesses all around the world, not just here in Hollywood. The first question which you have to ask yourself is, what's your goal? If you have a defined goal, you can build a strategy, and then you can build a timing. Timing and time management it's very important, right? It cannot be something vague, or it cannot be something uncertain. You have to know what is your ultimate goal. When I meet a lot of actors, when I do workshops, I ask them, what is your goal? Would you like to be an actor? Or you'd like to be a movie star? There's a big difference. There are a lot of working actors. Hollywood is full of people who are trying to be actors, who are actors, who are building themselves as actors. There are a very few who became movie stars. Now, if your goal is to be an actor, sure, you have to develop a portfolio, you have to have high quality headshots, you have to develop your skill. As a director, I always recommend practical skills, not just theory in the classes. And mostly, I love working with either well-experienced actors or not experienced at all. A lot of classes, a lot of coaches, they put a lot of patterns in people's minds and then it's way more difficult to handle certain issues on set. Pattern and it's basically the same pattern as people used to use in uh, the 90s and the 2000s, right? Today is a new era. And as I always advise people who are beginning or who are already plus or minus established is work on your brand, develop your brand. Step one would be, you have to find your type. What type are you? As for example, I was told that I could play an assassin, uh, I could play a business person, I could play a lawyer, I could play a dad, right? You should find your own type, at least three. And based on these types, develop your portfolio, your headshots, right? You have to represent this character when you submit uh, your portfolio to the casting director. Nobody will try to imagine you in a different role. The same thing with the short videos. If you have no reel yet, you need to record a few scenes of your monologues and dialogues based on your characters. And then further develop. It is important to understand. Nobody wants you. Nobody needs you. Only you are the person who wants the result, who wants that success. So you have to put a lot of work, a lot of effort, a lot of investment into building your own self, your own brand, your own name. You have to find your own est. You have to be the smartest or the dumbest. You have to be the hottest or the ugliest. You have to be the most talented. You have to be the fastest. You cannot be average. There are so many average people. You have to develop different skills which would take you away and put you above uh, everybody else. Today we'll have a few examples for you with our two actors, Melania and Alexandra. And we will show how actors are advised to work on monologues and dialogues. When I was 16, I thought by 23 I would be married, maybe have a kid. Corner office by day, entertaining at night. I was supposed to be driving a Grand Cherokee by now. Now I have my sight on 29 because 30 is just way too apocalyptic. 
I mean, where did you think you'd be by? I don't want to say anything that's anti-feminist. I mean, I really appreciate everything your generation did for me. But sometimes it feels like no matter how much success I have, it all won't matter until I find the right guy. I don't know. I could have made it work. He just really fit the bill. You know, my type, white collar, college grad, loves dogs, likes funny movies, six foot one, brown hair, kind eyes, works in finance, but is outdoorsy, you know, on the weekends. I always imagined he'd have a single syllable name like Matt or John or Dave. In a perfect world, he drives a forerunner. The only thing he loves more than me is his golden lab. Oh, and a nice smile. <laughs> it is important to build a team. I always advise my students when I do workshops, do a little bit of math. How much money plus time you spend on all your acting classes, acting courses, coaching. Sometimes it's around a thousand a month, maybe more. So it takes you 12,000 a year to just do theoretical courses, which don't really bring you anywhere. Now build a team, start working on monologues. Why on monologues? Because um, monologues are easier to work on. There's only one person. Then develop into dialogues. Then record. Give yourselves advices, right? This is how a team works. You would have an advice from your partner actor. You will have an advice from your partner DP, director, sound engineer. And this is how you would grow as an actor, not just performing. There is a huge system which everybody has to understand. The more you understand it, the better, the better specialist you, you become. So which types of characters would you see me play? Well, based on your look and your personality, Melania, I see you as a strong, independent woman, someone who takes lead, someone who's in charge, the boss lady, businesswoman. Um, I see you as someone who's sophisticated, um, pretty girl next door, very attractive, appealing, love interest. I also see you playing an artist, you know, at school, uh, the creative type kind of to yourself, but expresses themselves artistically. I can see you as a main character, like I said, the lead, but definitely someone who knows what she wants and isn't afraid to say it. And um, is there anything that you relate to more? A character that you... I feel like the lead character, the lead character. leadership, yes, I see that. I'm very... Um, passionate about, even in school or in general in life. <laughs> and switch. Okay. Um, I see you definitely being very motherly, um, loving kids a lot. I could definitely see you as a mom. Um, I also see you as some type of like a dancer maybe, or like um, uh, cheerleading maybe, something like that related to sports and creativity as well. Um, could also see you being an artist, um, painting maybe, um, could see you as a very um, to yourself kind of person, very creative, but um, you keep it in your own head and it's, you're very um, inside, you're very deep inside, but you don't express it as much. I could also see you as a very smart girl in school, very smart, um, very attractive, um, and yeah, is there anything you can relate to? Um, I relate to the cheerleader, definitely, the athletic part of me. Maybe a lead character or like, you know, mm -hmm. the best friend. Yeah, definitely. that's like super yeah. sweet, a little naive. Very, very nice. Yeah, yeah very nice very characters. Nice. Yeah. yeah. Be hot on market. Only then people such as agents or managers would want you. If you are a beginner, yeah, you might sign with a small agency or a small management company. You'll be one of the many candidates that they have. There are a few of their people who work and bring the money and they're focused on them. So having a manager or an agent 
doesn't really mean much in the beginning. It's all your own work. You have to understand also a difference between the agent and the manager. The agent is the person who negotiates your agreements. The manager is the one who is supposed to help you build your career. He or she is supposed to help you find your type, connect you with a proper photographer so your types are properly done and in terms of the quality requirements here in Hollywood and so on and so forth. Connect you with the media, with the PR and help you build your career. Nobody does it right now. Everybody's just submitting everything online. Nobody's taking your hand and bringing you to the studio. Only the top agencies, UTA, CAA, William Morris, uh, and so on, they can do it. So the goal is to get to work with them. How? Become a brand. So let's say you built your team, you have a few loyal friends without an employee mindset, that's very important. You're developing your strategy and strategies. You understand that each step you take, you educate yourself. Education is free online. You don't need acting classes. It's investment in yourself. Each time you work with a camera is investment in yourself. Each time you meet and practice and create something, it's investment in yourself. It's every day practice and every day it brings you closer to your goal. The result can come in one year can come in two years, five years. Sylvester Stallone was waiting for his success for seven years. Yeah, for example, um, Bill Gates became successful at 31 or Mark Zuckerberg became successful even younger, but the founder of KFC became successful at 62. You have to believe in yourself, you surround yourself with the proper people who push you up instead of bringing you down. And this is how the process will go develop different skills and stand out. Always stand out, find your ass, be hot on the market. Now I'll share with you an example which uh, we uh, discussed and we work with Melania, one of our actresses today. Uh, she was advised to play the role of a bad girl, right? And that's it. Now let's see, the actors or actresses, they have the age group, the look group, and now there is a type group. You have to analyze, will this type make me a star? Will this type bring me up? How many movies with these types are filmed every year and become successful? And then you see, you can calculate the chance. In this case, when the actress was told to play and to develop this character, uh, we calculated that there are no many movies coming with the lead of a bad girl every year. So it's mainly um, a supporting role, even less important than a supporting role. The audience, as well as the casting directors and directors, they will get used to this specific type. So we will work on um, developing other types. And with a lot of work, trying different monologues, different dialogues, trying yourself in different circumstances. Myself as a director, I could see way better types for this actress than she was advised in the past, and these types will bring her up. This is one step and it's very important. The second one is to become different, to acquire skills which would make you stand out, right? You have to learn different languages, foreign languages especially the ones which are not really, uh, maybe not, not powerful, but not common. I always advise learn Chinese language, learn martial arts, develop your skills. You have to be basically universal, but with specific skills on a decently high level. All these skills will make you stand out because if you are, let's say, a blonde actress, you know martial arts, you know dancing, you know Chinese, together with Spanish and together with proper English, it will make you standing out. A lot of people are not confident in themselves because of an accent. And I tell them, everybody has an accent. In California, you have an accent. In New York, you have an accent. In the UK, you have an accent. In um, Switzerland, in Norway, in Australia, everybody has an accent. Uh, accent is not something you have to be uh, afraid of. It's a tool which can become either your nightmare or it could be your asset. Because in here, everybody has perfect standardized accent. 
So you can use your skills of different languages, different accents, to make yourself different and stand out. Build a team. Your team has to consist of like-minded people, people on the same page, loyal people, not people with employee mindsets. That's very important. Now, if you do a little bit of research, you could see, for example, Arnold Schwarzenegger. He came to US, he had nothing, he had nobody, but only a team of people, of like-minded people with the same goals, the same values, the same ideas, they helped him to get his apartment, get his furniture, get his silverware. And only with the help of the teammates, he was being pushed in the gym and he became champion. Now you see he had a skill of a bodybuilder. He had a skill of an athlete with a discipline, with devotion. And he took all these skills into acting and then into politics. He had a team. Now it's your time to build your team of like-minded, loyal people to this idea and people who are willing to develop uh, all together, right? Ego is a huge problem. Now you have to be aware of that. Honestly, the more skills you acquire, the better. If you only act, that's only a little piece of filmmaking. I always advise people to learn different skills, learn how to work with the camera, learn how to work with the sound, how to work with the light, how to work with the makeup you will understand the whole picture way better. Slowly, with time and practice, your skills will grow, and this will make you valuable and really good as a professional, not the school. Now, let's do the math again. You would spend probably around $12,000 a year on your different acting classes, courses, coaching. If you have a team of, let's say, five people, that brings you to 60000 now you can take all these money, invest in some basic gear, invest in your own project. And this is how the actual brand of yours is growing. You create your own project. You create your own name with this project. You create a short film, you create these roles, you understand how the system works. You submit your project to the festivals. You're getting awards, you're connecting media, you're getting PR. This is how the system builds your name and makes it more valuable, right? Then you take all these materials, you put it on the social media, it develops as well. And when a director, a producer or a casting director sees you, he sees these results. This is the value which we want to bring into our projects. Everyone has to understand it's a business, not a charity. And of course, we will choose a person who will bring more value to the table and this is the value which you bring on another hand um, education is good it's free online you don't have to pay for it invest in other things uh, but also what makes you a good actor or a good director it's life experience I would like to share with you when I met a very successful Chinese director his name is Wang Weimin uh, he's a TV director in China and he told me that he um, as a director already, uh, was randomly talking to some people who were working probably uh, on the le lowest level in the um, service industry, in the restaurants. And they told him that they are actors, but they're doing all this job to get experience from different people, from different layers of society. They did dishwashing, then they went to McDonald's to work for McDonald's, then they chose other jobs other jobs this is like time which makes the wine better the same thing with the actors and directors if the person is not really experienced in life camera and the viewers would feel it's fake and we don't want that right so try different roles in actual life now it is also important to understand there are so many people with ideas how many people can perform them? How many people can bring them to the actual film festival, if we talk about the entertainment industry? How, how to pitch? I talk about all these and many more details in my book, which is how I uh, created and developed my own TV show. But today I'd like to emphasize on one, and probably the most important, learn how to sell. Learn how to sell the idea of this character in your script, why this is important. Sell it to your team. 
learn how to sell something to the other people you don't know. How? Try selling insurance. Not because you need the money, but because you need the skill. With the skill of selling, which honestly I didn't like as well. It wasn't my favorite thing to do. But without the skill, you won't be able to do much. You won't be able to make a film without a director. You won't be able to make a film without a producer. Uh, you won't be able to sell it without the selling skill. Now, if you really can't do it, it takes too much time, have someone in the team who can do it well. And the last thing which I would like to share with you today is value. Bring value to the table. Value is not something that is important or valuable to you. It's something that is important and valuable to the team, to the creator, to the production company which you would like to work with. It could be something different, but really valuable to them. A lot of actors, they would tell me, hey, I'm a good actor. Uh, there are so many good actors. Hey, I have an idea. I'm asking them, can you perform it? But when people come to me with a certain value, I see that they did homework. They are well prepared how to talk to me, how to talk to anybody in the industry. And this is already a good sign. Are you afraid of me? No, I'm not. You should be. I'm out of bullets. That's your problem. Not really. You want to kill me like a man? Or you want to kill me like a sheep? So, what's it going to be? Man or sheep? You want to man up? I'll man you up. You must, you must want to hurt me so bad. I'm not going to hurt you. I'm going to take your life. Come on, Valaine. Somebody's dying. Come on, Valaine. Come on, Valaine. Come on! Get up, villain! Get up! Now turn around! Turn around, sheep! Now what? I just recall the story how we met with a um, Chinese director, Wang Weimin, and he told me that when he graduated, there were only a few A-list directors in China, and there was no way that a little boy from the university would be given a chance to work with them. So he had to figure it out. So during night times he was writing scripts, he was trying to pitch them, to show them. But on the daytime he took a job at the TV station and he created a program. He was interviewing wives of these directors. Through these contacts he got direct contact to them. It was his idea of how to approach these directors. And when he told me this story, I started laughing because when I came to LA from New York uh, in 2015, I started doing about the same thing. I started working with a TV channel and we were interviewing a lot of celebrities, agents, managers uh, on the red carpets or in uh, private interviews. And this brought me a lot of connections. Now I was analyzing when I was thinking about the value. I was bringing them value of the media, of the exposure, and uh, because I'm a multilingual person, all my interviews were broadcasted not only in the US, but in China, in Europe, and this was valuable to them. Because let's say they had a product, they had a book, they had a film, they needed an investor, and with our interviews, they could get an investor from China or from Romania, or from Spain, or from Russia, uh, and this was very helpful. That's why they were open to meet and have an interview. And later, when I was doing my show, knowing these people, I got better deals than an average filmmaker would get on the market. So, bring value. Become valuable. Become hot on market. Find your est. Team up. Find your goal. Build a strategy. Under the strategy, build your tactics and micro steps which will help you to achieve your goals. Be wise with timing. Time management is very important. Be wise with the funds. It's also very important. Be wise with the attitude. Ego is the thing which kills so many talents and unfortunately they have sometimes no way back.